Hello, welcome back to Alternatives Pool Holding. Today it's the start of project Tidy Up the Garden. I say the start, you know, we're continuing to do it. But what I'm planning to do today is take down some of the brick wall border, move the chicken coop so that we can actually start to um, protect the garden from the chickens. And it's a right mess. But I've got some jobs I need to do, so I thought I may as well bring you along with me. So let's go and get busy. At the back here, you can see it's string on the back fence. That's where Rue has measured out that this little coop here, which is what the three little bantams sleep in, um, they're up and about at the moment round in the back garden, um, but that is where that's going to go across the back fence. What I need to do first is this little wall here was never cemented in because it's never meant to be permanent. But um, the chickens, believe it or not, have absolutely destroyed it. This border last year, I'm going to put some pictures in, like a little montage at some point. But this border last year, all the way down, was full of beautiful, beautiful flowers. But the chickens have eaten them all. So, this year, the little hutch is going at the back here. Then behind the hutch there, there's a big area that they can have as their dust bath area and for theirs. And then over there, there's the big border and that will be fenced off and that will be for my flowers um, but here we've got a massive catnip plant that needs um, trimming back I never got around to it and that needs dividing but most importantly underneath here where the hutch is going to go these bricks are to protect the fence from um, the damp of the um, soil so I need to take all those out and sweep it all back and make sure that's clear and I also need to get some of these nettles out because behind this fence is a big group of nettles that I'm not going to try and get out because the canals there um, I'm going to do that when I've got somebody with me to fish me out of the canal when I fall in because I probably will so I'm going to get a start on this today so that when the bearded dude comes home later he can lift the um, coop into place with me so I'll show you what I do as I go along and hopefully, if I can find my fork, I'm going to get this cat mint up and divide it. And then I can put some somewhere else. Yes, Mugwai, we know you've got a beautiful voice, darling. Beautiful voice. One big bundle of roots. Good gosh. Uh, hello, beautiful. You going for a malt? Muggy's got a bit of a bald bum and her tail feathers are coming out. <laughs> Poor baby. They've had five minutes out here and they have kicked everything everywhere. All the dirt's back up the fence. You're destructive little raptors, aren't you? There's only three of you at the moment. Little girls are back in their coop for now because the big girls bully them. So they can free range at separate times or in separate areas. But they were out at the same time and all hell broke loose, to be honest. <laughs> So if you're wondering how much damage can a chicken do to your garden, that's five minutes. So there you go. Let's meet the baby girls. Hey little ones. 
Hello, Santa. Hey, Papa. No, run away. <gasps> Who laid me an egg today? Who laid me an egg? Can I get the egg? Boop, boop. Oh. Bantam eggs are absolutely tiny, but they taste much stronger than a normal chicken egg. They're lovely. You can come back out in a minute, okay? I'll put the barrier up and you can have this garden and the girls can have the big garden, okay? coffee and they've made a right mess so it's time to section them off they've had a scratch through they've found some worms you've had some fun ladies time's up time while I'm here these are carrots I believe these are rainbow carrots that we sown a long time ago and this is what happens when I sow carrots they're like, you see, they're tiny, tiny, tiny. I'm going to leave them in there. And I've also found, <laughs> that is something that I totally forgot about, some sweet William that I sowed ages ago. So they need desperately potting on. Desperate. Right, girls, time's up. Guess who's been put away for being a menace? It is impossible to sort things out with Mogwai around. And she's not happy. Usually this area within Nifofia, which has got massive, looks so healthy. At the back here, um, we leave as a little nettle bed for the wildlife, um, which we get over winter and butterflies. But down there is quite a hole. Um, it seems like something from the back has been moved by the neighbour um, because that was completely blocked in. Now it's not. So I'm going to staple this mesh around all of the wood and then I'm going to weigh the bottom down with bricks and that will hopefully stop the chucks going on an adventure now that I've cleared this out. So I'm going to get on with that now. I'll do. I'm going to get some more bricks, make sure the edges are all secure, but that's pretty good. All right, so that's the gap filled in down there. I need to take up the rest of these bricks here and pull out that big, um, you can see the stem there, that big nettle that needs to come out, but I want to trace its root back this way a little bit. And then I need to tidy it underneath off here, push it back that way a bit, and then after cleaning up down here, we're ready to go. Right now, though, it's time to go and get some lunch. Rue's hungry. I'm starving and I think Bearded Dude's about to ring so I'm going to leave this for half an hour and come back in a minute and get some more bread. Hello little girls. You haven't put down there? What I'm going to do with it is I'm putting it in some pots for now I'm leveling this off where the hutch is going to go and then this I'm going to filter through it sieve it all make sure there's no nettle roots in and then I'll use that on something else but I don't want to just dump it on my border because it's probably got little bits of nettle root and then we'll have more nettles and I don't want that so I'm just going to level this off now
you doing? I'm trying to clear up the path. This plant, I'm not sure. Oh, that might be easy. I'm not sure if it's the exact name, but it's a perennial sunflower and it's a beast. It takes over everything. But it does look very nice and it survives the chickens. So, I've just dashed out in the rain because I did a big sit down piece to camera and I cut my head off. So you could basically see from like here, down. That was it. <laughs> so I did an explanation of what we did last night and everything that we've got planned for the garden and you, it was useless. So I thought I'd dash out again in the rain, the things I do for you guys, and just say that today is day two. Last night we moved the coop when the bearded dude got home and um, we have now got some clear space so I can sit down and do some proper planning for what the garden is going to be this year. Um, this is just the side garden, so this is the, the bit that runs at the side of the house. So we've got the front garden to plan, we've got the back garden which is behind you right now, which um, is a bit of a mess, to be honest. <laughs> we've got lots of plans and lots of things to do. So this is part one of Reclaim the Garden from the Chickens. It's going to be a long process over the summer. I'm going to create a playlist so you can watch along with us and see the work that we've done. So before this camera gets crashed by the rain, I'm going back inside to enjoy the rest of the video. See you in a bit. Would anybody like a very noisy chicken? <laughs> um, the coop is in its place now. The girls did not like it this morning. They refused to come down the ramp for a while, um, but that will do them well there. It means they get nice sunlight in the daytime because the other um, position um, wasn't brilliant for them. And then in the evening, when the sun comes around and it hits this way, they've got a nice protection so it doesn't get too hot. So it'll be good for them. And it means we've got the space back. What I do need to do though, is I'm going to have to pot on these Sweet Williams um, maybe today or tomorrow so that they get some good growth on ready to flower this year. Sweet, William, um, Sweet Williams are biennials so you sow them one year, um, usually around June, and then they flower the next year. But really they are a short-lived perennial because they will live for about five years if you leave them in the ground so the chickens ate my last lot so i've sown some more and these are going in the front garden because they'll be low plants but i'll get more around to which plants are going where soon i'm sorry about the traffic i don't know why it's suddenly so busy sorry so what i've done here yes you can come out in a minute girls is i've put some of the dirt that the girls had kicked onto the path back onto the beds and round where they dug out the roots i've plucked and um, blocked off with some bricks and that for now so that they can't dig those roots out anymore because that crown there is going to go in front of the house and then I'm going to move this crown here to the allotment and I don't want the roots to be damaged anymore. These are the two pots of dirt that we took out of the bed that had the nettles in so I'm going to sift through these and get any nettle roots out and then I might just put them back on this border because the chickens have um, been pooping in here and the soil is black it's beautiful so um, that'll be a good fertilizer for this ground and what i want to do is here they're going to have this as like a dust bath area around here i'm going to put a trellis up there and then i'm going to make a little shelter so that they've got it out of the rain it's not going to get wet and this will be their little area and they can dig it up all they like they don't like the nephophia which is grand they're not going to eat that and um, but i might trim some of the ends of the leaves back so they've got a bit more space the honeysuckle shouldn't be bothered by them and neither should the cherry tree so yeah this area is going to be for their dust bath and then we've got the long border which is traditionally for us a herbaceous border with herbaceous perennials um but this year i'm thinking of doing it as more of a like a kitchen garden border so as well as um plants in here i'm also going to put in some vegetables so we've got more to grow at home but I will finalise the plans for that and then I'll do a video exactly on how I'm going to plan that. 
every train and car in the world is going past now and trying to film. I'm on a race against time because it's supposed to be really heavy rain today and the clouds are looking very ominous. So, yes, what we're going to do is this wall that you can see across the bottom, we're going to concrete that in and then we're going to put some fence posts along this bed. And then in between each fence post there's going to be a fence panel but it's going to be hooked onto the fence posts so that I can unhook them and get in and maintain that border because otherwise it's just going to be too high for me to lean over um, so that it's protected from the chickens. When we moved in, probably, when did we move in? Four years ago? Um, this was like, what, six inches high? So it's doing really well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video with all of its background noise and all the cars that insist on interrupting us. <laughs> but this has been part one of Garden Rescue garden rescue reclaiming the garden from the chickens because to be honest they've destroyed it so this year we're going to get it back to how it was and at the end of this video there, there'll be a montage of the flowers and everything that used to be in here i don't think i've got much video footage but we'll give it a go so i'm going to start a playlist of this and over the year we'll see it progress and change and that will include the front garden the side garden and the back garden so thank you for watching this has been jazz from alternative small holding and um i'm gonna go in now and dodge this rain get a coffee because I need more coffee <laughs> see you soon thanks for watching bye bye